Hey, Richard. What's up, dog? How you doing, bro? How you doing, man? Do you guys see me? I can see you. We oh. can see you. All right. Yeah, I don't see myself on here. But how you doing, dog? Yeah, just, I'm doing. I'm doing. I'm doing great, bro. Really good. Really good. Great to have you on the show. Thank you. Thank you for having me, bro. First, first guest on the Heart of an Outlaw show. Uh, so amazing to be amazing to be on with you. Um, how are you doing, bro? I'm man. I'm flabbergasted. Honestly, I didn't expect all this shit to happen. You know what I'm saying? I I, I was just doing my job. <laughs> wow, <laughs> you you blew up, bro. You blew up. <laughs> thank you, bro. Thank you, thank you, man. I appreciate it. Props to you. Props to you. Massive respect. Thank you. I mean, me and you go, me and you go back from. Uh, I think I interviewed you. Was it last year? Yes, and yes. Yes. Cool. And uh, so a lot's happened since then. A lot's happened since then. Oh so, yeah. So so I just this has happened, bro. It's it's kind of weird that uh, your your interview has propelled me into uh, another level, and then aligning that with the the gigsalad.com and the work that I do. In the midst of the pandemic, a lot of my um, bookings were canceled, you know. Of course, of course. And, and uh, thank God Kate and Chris were able to get married. That's what, that's all I want to do is make people happy, bro. You know what I'm saying? I think, yeah, I think you did that. You delivered, bro. You delivered. <laughs> thank you, thank you. <laughs> so, I mean, what's it like being Richard Garcia? I mean. Honestly, honestly, bro, uh, I walk. Uh, regularly Joe Schmo life. Um, uh -huh. I be, I mean, with the with the perks of looking like the great Machiavelli, Tupac Shakur, you know, maybe rest in peace, you know, and rest in peace of Phoenix Shakur. And um, it's just so many things that, uh, you know, I'm a teacher. Uh, I'm a substitute mm -hmm. teacher for 14 years. And I told you this before, it helps in the classrooms. I don't walk around with a bandana. Yeah, no, I don't do that. I walk around cool. and, and, you know, like the old, like um, Steve Harvey. I like to walk around like in an old fashioned suit and tie, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. To get, you know, it's like a Clark Kent, it's like a Clark Kent Superman thing. So, uh, are you switching? Yeah, basically. And it's like, you know, me and Pac got the same birthday. So I'm constantly listening to his music. I just sing along, you know what I'm saying? I pick up his vibe, I pick up his, his lyrics. They, you know, they, they move me in different ways. <laughs> And um, I'm still working at the supermarket, you know, part time, 25 uh, years with that. You understand? And uh, I'm a workaholic, I want to say, because the night after I did that wedding, I didn't uh -huh. even get to sleep. I went straight to work and worked a four hour shift, went home, went to just, sleep, just to wake up to go back to work. So, wow. Yeah, so people don't understand, like when they said, oh, he charges $2,000 a show. That's bullshit, bro. That's bullshit. Uh, my 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 prices are Walmart prices. Walmart uh -huh. prices. You know what I'm saying? Uh -huh. Cheap, cheap, cheap. You know what I'm saying? And again, I don't do it for the money. I do it more for the love. You know what I'm saying? Uh -huh. Somebody asked me, would you sing a happy birthday? How much do you charge? I'm not going to charge you to go online. And you know? No, no but I'm going to give you a tip. I said, no, no. She said, I must give you a tip. And, you know, the tip was beautiful. Thank God. Thank God these people gave me a tip. But I do it from the heart. You understand? It's not about gaining money. It's not about gaining followers. It's me. It's mm -hmm. me. It's Richard Garcia. But I carry, uh, 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 I, you know, I am like a vessel for Tupac Shakur. I feel sometimes. You know what I'm saying? And I do get the the, the mean, the mean stares sometimes, the hate. But it is what it is. It's all part of life. I mean, I'm Puerto Rican. I'm Puerto Rican, but I've been around the world. You know, I've traveled mm -hmm. to Dominican Republic. I've traveled to Cancun, Mexico, nine times. I've been to Puerto Rico. My own family. My mother, my grandmother, my, lives in Puerto Rico. My aunt's uh -huh. live in Puerto Rico. Um, but I was born and raised in Newark, New Jersey. And being born and raised in Newark, New Jersey, that's where the outlaws come from. Yes. You get it? Yes. That's where Pedro Hussein came from. Matulu Abil, you understand? Napoleon. He uh -huh. he went to the same school that I went to, uh, Grove Street, Urbanton. 
We was all uh, in the area together. You understand? He knows my cousin. So it's like wow. Fatal Hussein, may he rest in peace. You know what I'm saying? His oldest son is, his, his oldest son's baby mother is, is my cousin's wife's sister. So it's so many things oh. entangled, isn't it? You understand? It's like, so, you know what I'm saying? Like being Puerto Rican, being born and raised in North New Jersey, you know, I, mm -hmm. it's a hard knock life by a single mother, just like Pac said, you understand? And mm -hmm. Essex County is a rough county where I lived. And then we moved to Jersey City, another rough county, chill town, kill town, you know what I'm saying? And I've been here for like 30 years and uh, the people who have created Tupac Shakur, I did not create this. Who created this was the students, my students, my 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 um, customers at the supermarket that I've been in 25 years, the school system that I've been working for 14 years. All that mm -hmm. shit accumulated all these people. So people ask me, how did you get all these likes? How did you get all these followers? I don't pay for followers. I don't have money for that. I bust my ass to make a little bit of money. You understand? That's it, that's it. So what I do is like an escape. So when I do the Tupac shows and when, I, when I'm just chilling and listening to Tupac, you see me down the street walking with my bandana, you know what I'm saying? Just minding my business, just rapping Biggie, rapping Tupac, you know what I'm saying? I just love hip hop. Exactly, exactly. That, that's, that's brilliant to hear. That's and, awesome to hear. And, you know, I tell my students, I sit in high school, I teach pre-K through 12. Um, when uh -huh. I teach the little kids, I have children. You know I have children. My children, are all, I God bless all seven of them. I love all my children. Today's my, bro mm -hmm. my brother Jonathan Pena's birthday. God bless you, brother. I love you. Happy birthday, brother. Um, my mother only had three boys. Me, my brother Matthew. He's your complexion. Okay? My brother oh, yeah. Matthew is your complexion. And we have the same mom and father. And my brother, my youngest brother, my stepfather, who's been in my life for like 40 years, for uh, you gotta understand, like Tupac's life with Dr. Matulu Shakur, his stepfather, and yes. my stepfather, it's like the same fucking thing. That's why I try to tell oh. people, me and wow. Pac, we have a parallel life. So my stepfather, mm -hmm. he's not a, he wasn't no gang and he was none of that, but he's very intelligent, very smart, and he's Dominican. Okay, right now you have Dr. Matulu Shakur, who's very intellectual and very knowledgeable and intelligent. Shout out to mm -hmm. Seth Shakur. Shout out to Kristen Parkins. Shout out to Mo Preen. I love you guys. Shout out to Hustle yeah. Simmons. I love you, my G. But you gotta yeah. understand, I didn't have my father, so I could relate to the students that come in my classroom and say, Mr. Garcia, you know, I don't have a father. Or Mr. Garcia, mm -hmm. this such and such has happened in my life. I try not to be mm -hmm. a guidance counselor because I'm not certified, but I am a substitute teacher and they know that what I speak is real. I have seven kids. I've been through the dirt. I, I, I'm, I'm a grandfather, and I'm proud to say I'm a grandfather. I'm having my third granddaughter in September for my son, Isaiah. I have two. Yes, thank you, man. I have three beautiful grandkids. You guys can see it on my Instagram post, but what I'm trying to tell people is what I bring to the table is passion. You understand? I'm not trying to become... An overnight sensation. I've been doing this shit for thirty years. You know what I'm saying? I think that passion. We we, we saw a lot of that passion over the weekend. Yeah. You know, when that video video came out, it hit hit Instagram. It hit. It was world star hip hop. It just blew up everywhere. Yeah. I mean, about the wedding. How how did it come about with uh, with Chris uh, and and Casey? How did how did the whole thing come about? Well, that's the thing. I told Kristen, I'm like, are you sure you want to hire me? For next year, are you talking about yeah. a year from now? Anything can happen. She goes, no, no, I'll pay you now. Last year, and she hired me through Gig Salad, G I G S A L A D dot com, and you can hire other uh, celebrity impersonators. There's other Tupacs on there too, but they selected wow. me last year. She said, no, I, I need you. I need you. I said, okay, no problem. Um, so next thing you know, a year goes by. She's like this wedding is happening i'm like what mm -hmm. i'm marrying i'm marrying him i'm like okay girl let's do it you know what i'm saying wow. and i didn't have i usually rent the, the white suit if i have to go to a wedding and do something like that 
because of the coronavirus, they don't want to let nobody rent shit. So you yeah, have to buy yeah. the suit. So I'm out there, mm -hmm. I'm like, and I'm thinking, you know, and my wife says to me, this girl only gets married one time in life. You only get married one time in life. Let's make that shit special. Get her the suit. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Forget whatever she paid you. Let's go overboard. Let's get this suit top to bottom. Mm -hmm. So I put it together. We got it. Fine. I went through hell to find it, but I found it. And next thing you know, it's just, it, you know, I went and it just, I basically, I, deal, I did what I usually do. I give my 110% to keep Tupac's memory and legacy alive. Like I promised Bill Garland, his biological father, and I promised a Phoenix score. They both told me, do what you do, but keep his shit in a good light. Don't go on no negative shit. And that's what I try to do. I try to stay positive and, you know what I'm saying? I try to just, you know, keep the kids, keep the kids um, positive. Of course, of course. I mean, Snoop Dogg, Snoop Dogg shared a video of you over the weekend. I know. How, Dog, wow. I almost had, yo, my blood pressure went up. I almost had a heart attack. <laughs> then I sent it to my daughter and she's like, she, it took her about a couple of hours. And then she's like, are you serious? It didn't sink into her head. And I'm like, Snoop Dogg. Godfather <laughs> Snoop Dogg just, oh, what? He got a video on his, you know. So it's like, shout out to Snoop Dogg. Man, thank you, man. Thank you. God willing, man. You know, I, I have so many people tell me, you know what would be awesome? I said, what? You, Snoop, and Dr. Dre doing a show. Uh -huh. I'm like, what? They was like, yeah, you guys will break the internet. You probably just break the internet. I'm like, yeah, that's crazy. That would be something that's like magical, bro. Of course, of course. And rolling in, rolling into that, if if that could happen, what's what what's your favorite songs that you would actually perform? Oh, bro! If you could actually take it, take it on the road, uh, you know, even even by yourself, or if it was to happen with, let's say Snoop Dogg or a Dr. Dre or an, another hip hop artist, what are the favorite songs you'd like to perform on stage? I would love to do Hail Mary. I would love to do Changes. I would love to do um, California Love. I would, I would, man, it's, I would think I'd do all his shit because I honestly, I love his music and people don't believe me when they're like, damn, you know that song too? So I know about maybe 30 to 40 tracks. Word wow. for word, I try to keep up, but I'm always practicing. So, cause you can never beat the master. I can never feel Tupac Shakur's shoes, never. Ever, ever, he is the king. But he's the he's the he's the greatest. Yeah, like you know, you remember how they used to have the Elvis? They still do the Elvis Presley impersonators, Michael yeah. Jackson. I know them all, but you know, it's like what I, one thing I learned working for Omnia Club inside the Caesar's Palace in Las Vegas. That was uh -huh. like my first gig ever, and thank you, Caesar's Palace and Omnia Club. Um, they taught me that you allow. When you perform, the you know, I would just rap over him, but his lyrics mm -hmm. are still there. So I always feel like when I do my performances, like Pac is there. I feel like he got my back. So before I do a uh -huh. performance, I pray. You know what I'm saying? I'm I'm a I'm a I'm an avid prayer. I'm an avid person to pray. And mm -hmm. none of this could happen without God, Jesus. And I pray, God, thank you, Lord, Allah, thank you. And I I pray constantly because I come from an environment that you don't take shit for granted. You understand? <laughs> I take, uh, my, my environment has made me so like aware of what's going on around me and my surroundings. You know, it's like so many killings going on in this world. And when I saw all the comments after the, 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 the wedding, it kind of uh -huh. bothered me because I'm like, we're stuck like as black Hispanic men, as okay. white men, as a whole, our world is stuck. It's like we're stuck in the past. People are still ignorant. People are still prejudiced. People are still hating. If you don't like the content, just change it. You don't have to watch it. I'm not trying to be somebody else. No, I'm trying to make somebody happy. I'm trying to do what I do, what I was paid for, do my business that I work for, gigsalad.com. I'm just an employee. There's other Tupac Shakur impersonators, tribute artists like Kevon Wright. Kevon Wright is very good. He's one. You got Mark Rose. 
You got the guy from the All Eyes on Me film. You got all these different people, just like you have all these different Michael Jacksons, Elvis Presley's, Prince, and may they all rest in peace. I even found Biggie, you know what I'm saying? And yeah, yeah Biggie looking like Jamal Woodard, actors, uh -huh. people who have inspiration and dreams. And I don't know if it's jealousy or envy, but we have not uh -huh. progressed as I thought we would. And then people want to bring in politics. I'm like, politics have no business here. This is of a course. wedding. That's all it was. It was fun. You know what I'm saying? And yes, I, I wish it would turn into something else, you know? Of course. Of course. I mean, with, with hip hop, hip hop, hip hop's this, the culture of hip hop, it speaks to the people, it speaks to the masses about social, social issues that are going on, the poverty, the racism. Mm -hmm. Do you think today's hip hop is doing enough to address the issues going on in, in not, not only in America, in, in the whole of the world? Well, I've been hearing a lot of independent artists and people that's coming up, new talent, and they've yeah. been, you know, um, rapping about the situations that's going on in 2020 with all this bullshit mm -hmm. going on. And, you know, to me, their, their music isn't getting pushed out there. That type of music doesn't get uh -huh. pushed out there. And people like Tupac's music doesn't get pushed out there because they know that's giving a positive message. And a lot of people don't really care about positive message because we're living in a time where it's like judgment day. You understand? Yep. It's like mm -hmm. the pandemic has made everybody scared and everybody's coming out of their face differently. I believe that yeah. everybody's just emotional and we have to learn how to control our emotions and not jump on our emotions all the time. You know, um, uh, there's so many things going on at once, you understand? And I'm trying mm -hmm. to tell the children, the students that I do see in the street, because there's no school right now. Everything is through Zoom, all right, which is safer. And, I, I'm, and I'm not really getting paid. So now I got to go look for another mm -hmm. job. Get what I'm saying? Because I, I sit yeah. in the classroom. So now I got to go do like maybe census, just something that's going to hold me over until we start opening schools again. God will. Of course. You know what I'm saying? Of course. In, in the UK, we open up uh, 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 Of course. In the, the UK, schools are reopening back in uh, ne early next month, uh, so, uh, next week, the week after. So, I mean, hopefully, fingers crossed for, you, for yourselves uh, yeah, in America. Things, things do open up soon for you. Yeah, no, no. I mean, I, again, one thing I learned living in North New Jersey, born and raised by a single mother, the Lord mm -hmm. always provides. Allah will always provide. You don't ever have to worry about it. You know what I'm saying? We need to start learning for the simple things, the good things in life. We don't really need all this stuff that we have. You know what I'm saying? As long mm -hmm. as you can survive through the hardest nights, that's what makes you a uh, you know, a, a strong, a soldier in this world. That's what I try to tell that's you. That's very true. You know? That's, that's very true. That's now, very true. I don't know if you... That's it. Uh-huh. Yeah, go, go, go ahead. Go ahead. I, I, I don't know if you, if you were aware, but I was working on a film, right, uh, where Tupac, uh, Tupac Shakur may be alive. So a lot of people ask me, do you think he's alive? And I mean, listen, the way I was brought up on the East Coast, Tupac is mm -hmm. gone, you understand? May he rest in peace, he's gone, you understand? And I speak to the family. Mm -hmm. I, I spoke to a family, she called me, she rest in peace. I speak to the family, he's gone, you understand? He lives on through his music. He lives on through his movies, through his inspiration, through me, yes. through you, through all the fans Tupac still lives on. But at the same time, yeah. in the same token, okay, on the West Coast, a lot of people believe he's alive, you understand? And, uh -huh. and a lot of people give me a lot of information and theories where it can be possible. And I tell them, wow, that is possible. But I would never mm -hmm. thought, I never thought that I would meet uh, a guy like Rick Boss, okay, this guy who was creating a, a film, and him. Like people ask me, how did you get in contact with this guy? We were talking, he kept saying, listen, I have an independent film in mind I want to make. And I was like, fuck it, I've done independent films before, plenty of them. Let's do it. Let's, you know, let's do it. So then he, he didn't have that much money. He flew me out, you understand? And we filmed a little bit and then it started picking up momentum. Then he started uh -huh. his posters and started, he started really pushing hard. 
And yeah, it, we, we see that. We, we see now. It was like wet the appetite for, for t a lot of Tupac fans. Yeah, a lot of people came up to me. They were like, "Yo, I love this movie that you're doing. You know, you're gonna make um, you know." But then the family got upset. You understand? And, and, and a lot of my friends they got upset over it. And I'm putting it out there because, like I said, um, I don't want to. I don't want to hurt either one. You understand? God knows what He's doing. The Lord knows what He's doing. So yeah. As soon as we was about to start finish production or get into it, coronavirus came and stopped everything. You understand? Um, then uh, the, the director, Rick Boss, he had to go handle some things with his family. You understand? Maybe coronavirus. We don't know. Uh, medical issues. But everything happens for a reason. Maybe it was paused because the family didn't like it. I don't know. I mean, and I'm still talking to Dr. Maturu Shakur about it. I write him. I'm always in correspondence. That's, that's another thing. People be like, trying to be Tupac. Motherfucker, I talk to the family, nigga. You don't know me. I'm not trying to be ignorant, but when you come at me sideways, that fierce dude's going to come out. You know what I'm saying? That's that Gemini in me. That's that hot shit. But I try to stay professional and positive. So I try to tell people, we're trying to do the movie. Yes, we are. The dude wants to do it. But again, with coronavirus and everything and all the film and production being stopped, nothing's going to be done for now because uh, even if you try to make an independent film, it's very hard when you have restrictions. And there's restrictions in every state. You can't even fly. So, Of course, of course. Taking the film, uh, what makes it different from other two-part movies, two-part documentaries, of course, it's based on a theory, like you just said. Mm -hmm. Well, could you? My my buddy can you was doing it. The, the man who's making this movie, Rick Boss, he uh, he got us on News Thirteen the night after the Oscars. I don't know if you got to see that on the news. The night uh -huh. after the Oscars went off, there was a big segment on the news, and he he is adamantly, you know, stuck that he's alive and his story is mm -hmm. the truth. So, like, we have, we and him have arguments. Oh, you don't believe? I don't believe. I do believe a little bit. No, no, you don't believe. Okay, I'll give you the benefit of the doubt. So, to me, it's, it's, like, it's like two fans <laughs> arguing, but we both have love, so we want to make the project happen. Um, huh? The thing is, uh, in his film, he doesn't die. In his film, um, uh, 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 there's a body double, and there's a lot of theories if you go into it. Um, there was someone else walking around that looked just like him, just throwing people off. At that time, we didn't have cell phones and stuff like There's no cell phones in this movie. So um, um, and, and it's just like video camera. And, and the way he was like elaborating it and what makes it distinctly, his story so distinctly different from others is this. This man's father is a Black Panther, was a Black Panther. May he rest in peace. And, and he has friends who, this, as growing up through the Black Panther on the West Coast, their chapter over there, I, I don't know the number, but he had told me. And he was explaining to me how his father and his friends always told him Tupac's alive and the Black Panthers helped them. And I was like, really? And, and you know, the, the story's interesting. And I'm like, wow, that could really run. You know, I could see that happening. And like, like I told him, you know, but the family's upset about it. And he's like, but the family, I want to give the money to the family. I want to give the proceeds to the family. I want them involved. So it was a lot of, you know, there was a lot of commotion against that. And I was trying to be the mediator and talking to Tyrone Shakur. God bless you, Ty. Yeah. Tyrone Shakur, and um, that is Dr. Matula Shakur's youngest son. And um, I was, uh, you know, adamantly on it, you know, and coronavirus came to stop it. So we just got to wait and see what happens. You know, fingers, you know? fingers crossed. Fingers, fingers crossed, crossed, man. I mean, again, no disrespect to anybody. I mean, we all want everybody. Like, the, okay, I don't know if you know the project I'm working on. A lot of people might be pissed off about this. Um, if you go to Camshaw, K-A-M-S-H-A-H, Camshaw, he's a rapper from the West Coast. Now, he brought me out to the West Coast right after uh, Rick Balls. And we went, to, we went from Las Vegas and I drove to Los Angeles. 
and we started doing a, 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 a short film slash video with Spice One. Okay, uh, West yes. Coast rapper. Shout out to the official Spice One. Um, all right, and, and um, Spice One. He when when I met him, I heard of him. I heard his music. I was like, mm -hmm. wow! I was in shock because I'm like, Spice One, dog. You did music with Pac. Like, you get see what I'm saying? Like, people just keep coming in my in my path, and then who else comes in my path? He said, Rich, I have a surprise for you. Cam Shy goes, wait till you see who's waiting for you in L.A. when we drive out there. So we go out to the L.A. Suge Knight Jr., Suge Jacob um, Knight. So he's in a video. So it's, you know, you know, right? With love and listings or something like that. Love and hip hop and, yeah. So I'm like, what? I'm like, dog, really? So it's like, you know, and then when I met Suge Jr., he was like, Yo, damn, you like Uncle Pac for real. So we was just kicking it and, you know, just having fun. Of course. What are the conversations between between uh, you two? Between well, uh, Shook Knight's son and... I told him, I said, listen, I've been writing your father, man. He was like, yeah, my father really can't, can't see. So when you write to him, you got to write big letters. So I was like, okay. I was like, I started writing Shook again. Again, I don't really get nothing back from him, no feedback. Maybe, again, you know, because they get so much spam mail. People, you know, they send, like, Dr. Matulu Shakur. We're trying to write uh, a petition to get him out of jail. Do you get what I'm saying? Because he's... It needs to happen. Yeah, he... It needs uh, definitely needs to happen. They gave him 60 years. The, the judge who gave him 60 years, what I read was, uh, for every day mm -hmm. you do, it's a double. So his 60 years was cut down to 30. He's doing 34 years now, and they still won't let him out. And what kind of bothers me is, you know, a lot of, and that's another thing I keep telling people, I don't only write to Dr. Mtulu Shakur, I write to other brothers in jail, friends of mine who are in jail, real killers who are in jail. And they are my friends. They, you know, I'm not, I'm not God, you know what I'm saying? I, I can't forgive anybody. Only God could do that. But we all need support. And we got to remember our brothers in jail. So I write people in jail. And I, I told you before, I write people in jail. Yeah. And, um, and I write them because to me, it's like some type of uh, meditation to get that shit. You know what I'm saying? The stress. Off of the exactly. Place. But understand that whatever you're going through in life, someone else is going through worse. That's what I try to tell you. And what you're doing now as well, that's keeping them in a positive mindset. Yeah. For them to keep going for, for, for their sentence, to fulfill their sentence, that's keeping their, their, their mind positive, which yeah. is a good thing. Mm -hmm. I, I'm constantly writing letters and to people in jail that I know, and it's like, you know, it's, it does help me mentally. I do it monthly. I monthly send out letters to Dr. Matulu Shakur and three of my friends, one of them was doing life and, you know, shout out to Lee. And it's just uh, so many things going on in this world that uh, no one knows two sides. There's two sides to the story, you know what I'm saying? And there's the truth and only the Lord knows the truth, so. Exactly, exactly. But taking it back a bit, you yeah. mentioned you had a, you met, the late great Afini Shakur, mm -hmm. um, she give you her blessing. Can you go go expand into that a bit? All right. When I met Afini Shakur in 2010, um, it was at the Tupac Shakur tribute um, birthday party. It was my birthday, and my wife decided to take me to Atlanta, Georgia, to the Tupac Shakur Ch Ch um, Foundation out in Atlanta, Georgia the school that he had in Stone Mountain, Georgia. Shout out to Stone Mountain, Georgia, um, ATL. Um, and I was walking in the crowd and the Phoenix saw me and I kept telling your mom, your mom, I got a newspaper for you. I got a newspaper for you. Cause the local Jersey Journal had wrote a newspaper article on me about trying to get a Tupac movie, whatever. At the time, I was going for Antoine Fuqua's film, and I had gave the 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 um, newspaper article to the to her security detail. So the security detail says, "Hold it, you hold on." 
What's up, Jam Jersey? Shout out. So next thing you know, um, Afini says, let him in. So I walk up to Afini, she called me and my wife. And I said, Afini, Ma, how you doing? So we start hugging each other. That's all we start doing. She starts crying. I start crying. It starts raining on us. All right. My wife said that. She never seen nothing like that. Okay. A special so, moment. But the thing is, in Atlanta, Georgia, Atlanta is known for the Bible Belt. Atlanta is known for very spiritual things happening with the, with the Lord, all right? Especially with a lot of um, uh, religious stuff. But all I know is that we were hugging each other. And then I looked at her. She looked at me. And she was like, wow. She was like, wow. And I told her, I said, listen, I gave her the, the newspaper. I mean, the newspaper article in the envelope mm -hmm. with my information. And I told her, I said, this is a dream come true for me that I'm meeting you. And she was like, my son would be so happy for what you're doing. She's like, keep doing what you're doing. She's like, I see you. I like it. And then um, I told her, I said, listen, I'm trying to go for the film. So then we got into the film. And she's like, listen, you might not be able to get into the film right away. The first film, because the first film is out of my hands. Um, right. They kind of bamboozled me out of that. And you probably won't get the the first film and the first film is going to probably be somebody one of their people i was like i didn't understand what she was talking about at the time but now i do and then she said to me but sweetheart keep doing what you're doing don't ever give up mm -hmm. on your dreams she said i do see you in future tupac films or future hip-hop films and then, and then my wife was my wife was standing there she was she was my witness and the next thing you know i said afini i said this is my wife mary and I said, she's from Egypt. She didn't even know who Tupac was. I said, me and her had been together for about, I want to say a good four or five years at that time. And mm -hmm. then next thing you know, she started crying. Feeling was like, oh my God. She was like, Tupac wanted to marry an Egyptian woman at one time. He said, mom, I want to marry an Egyptian girl. She's like, you live in my son's life. <laughs> so we started laughing and shit like that. <clears throat> And she said, God bless you. She's like, I see you doing your thing. And she had to keep it moving. So she, wow. she kept it moving. Yeah. And I enjoyed myself. And it was nothing but love out there. Of course. Of course. What an experience for you, Richard. That's, that's but, mind blown. But you, but you, oh, yeah. What I did show her, this is the funny part. I said to her, Afini, I have something in my phone to show you. So I pulled out my phone. So I show her Bill Garland, Tupac's biological father. And I'm like, he works in a town that I'm in. I was like, we met, we spoke, and we hang out for once in the blue moon. We chit chat, and she's like, oh my god, he hasn't changed. Wow, he looks so young. And I, and then I said, that's his daughter, uh, to uh, to, um, to to Mika or Tamara, and then yes, um, and yeah, and then he and then she goes, oh my god, that's that's Mary's daughter. So she knew Uncle Bill Garland's second wife you understand she's like wow she, she she looks just like her mother so you know it's like there was a connection there you know what i'm saying she was like rich i really see you doing something with yourself doing this she said don't let nobody stop you just keep doing what you're doing but do me a favor keep my son's memory in the good light and mm -hmm. do me another favor tell everyone that my son is gone he is gone uh -huh. Okay, the family tells me all the time he is gone, and see that's why, I, and that's why I argue with Rick Boss because I told him, my bro, I done met his mom. He said, the uh -huh. I done met the family. I'm like, I know, I know what you're saying, but speaking to her eye to eye, when she said to me, my son lives on through you. He lives on through mm -hmm. his fans. He lives on through his art. He lives on through mm -hmm. music. He lives on through his writings and his movies. Of course. Of course. And, and that's and that's how I took it. And since then, I ran with it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I and you've done a brilliant job. Yeah. And you've done an amazing job. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I was like, I, I'm shocked that, you know, that to me that, you understand, look, I, I, my best friend is 88 years old. He's a retired judge. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's my best friend. Why is he my best friend? Because I talk to him more than I talk to my grown children. Why? Because... When you get older, you have so many wise stories to tell. Mm -hmm. And 
you have to listen to the clues and the words that the elderly give you. Because some of them, they, their time is very short. You understand? Phoenix's time is very, you know, fast paced. So when she speaks to a person, when a celebrity gives you advice or they talk to you, you got to listen to the little words. You understand? And try to take that and, and, and learn from it. So. Of course. Of course. See, we, you carrying his legacy on. Let's take it back to when, when did you first get into Tupac? When did you first hear his, was he a lyric or was he a certain song? Oh, or? well, when I first, first, first listened to Tupac, I'm going to take it. I'm honestly, I'm honestly telling you the truth. This is where I think it's spiritual. When I was listening to Tupac, before Tupac, I was listening to Digital Underground. The Humpty Dance is your chance to do the hump. Come on. Ooh, baby. Do the hump, the hump. So I was listening to Shock G. You know what I'm saying? Money B. I was listening to all these people. And then when Tupac came in with Digital Underground, that's when I was like, oh, shit. And I, I, I heard him on the, the same song, the same song, the um, Dan Aykroyd movie that they made back in the day that Tupac oh, yes. appeared in. Yeah, when, when I heard that, when I heard Tupac came in, I seen him coming in with the whole, they were carrying him, he's like a prince. Do you remember that video? Yeah. And then, because, yo, I, I was a big digital underground uh, fan at the time when I was younger. And I was always just into digital underground and Easy e So Easy e NWA, that's why I love Dr. Dre, I love Snoop Dogg. I, I I grew up listening to that music, okay? And then I got into Tupac through Digital Underground. And then a best friend of mine, he's like my brother, like my cousin, Chuck, he, uh, um, Chuck um, The Throne. I think Chuck The Throne, something like that. My boy Chuck, he's on, yeah, on Instagram. He's cutting my hair. Now, I used to have long hair. I don't think I have long hair anymore. I'm like 45. I'm about to be bald over here. But I had long hair. He was giving me the shape up. And I'm like this. And then one day, he was like, yeah. And, I, and I, he, I'm like, the fuck? And I did like this. And I started crying. And I got, I got pissed off. Like, Just cut it all off, man. Just cut that shit the fuck off, man. You're fine. You're going to cut it off. So he bought one. So I'm walking down the street, walking like this, mind my business. And everybody's like, oh, shit. You know who you look like? I'm like, who? They're like, Tupac. I'm like, Tupac? They're like, I don't look like no Tupac. He's like, yes, you do. So I'm walking around. Then I go home. I watch. I get around. The video, I get around. So I'm like, oh, mm -hmm. shit. So the next thing you know, I was watching the video. The next thing I was like, start popping on one of these. I was oh, yes. enjoying this. Let me enjoy myself and just, hey, you know what? It sticks to me. So now it's just like, I'm always walking around with my bandana. You know what I'm saying? And I was about, I want to say 19. Now, I got seven kids. So you know how I accumulated that, right? Looking like pop. And then after a while, I had to put a knot on that motherfucker. So no more. <laughs> Of course, of course. So, what's next for you, Richard? Right now, I mean, the right. always now you've got you've got that platform. You've got that platform. You've yeah. completely blew up. I know. It's next crazy, man. While well, I'm praying that other other windows and doors start flying open and I start making moves again, but again, we got to respect the coronavirus pandemic and the restrictions. So everything's yeah. kind of moving slow paced, but um, uh -huh. with, with all this, you know uh viral i'm pretty sure it's gonna go crazy once you guys see the cam shop video with me in it and uh with you know starring suge knight and spice one and and cam shop and, and and we have a new rapper named dub raw dub raw uh -huh. 74 you can look at him from on instagram this guy sure, for sure. Once he comes out, dog, people gonna think, you know, wow, Pac is back because he sounds like the, you know, like Pac. So of course, of course. Wait, when is that dropping? Uh, the the audio should be dropping um this Friday. Go on Cam Shaw, uh, K A M S H A H, um, and the video should be dropping this. And the audio should be dropping this Friday, 
Um, the video should be dropping sometime in October if everything goes as planned. Um, yeah. As far as the, the, the Tupac film that I was telling you about, that's very, that's still up in the air, you know, so I don't, I, you know, I don't know, like, I've, right now, like I said, I stick to work. I kind of, I, I, I'm always working. Like I told you, there's no school, so I might start doing the census. So I'm always looking for work. I'm always, you know, able to work, but I've been getting a lot of bookings on Gig Salad now. And honestly, if they start going through, uh, you might start seeing more videos. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's just like Tupac. I mean, he was a work, he was known for, for being a workaholic. Yeah, so I can't sit, I just to... can't sit in the house. I don't know how, listen, man, if you said to me, if I'm not making, listen, if you said to me, I'm gonna give you a ladder, go up on that roof and go and go do some roofing. And roofing is very yeah. easy uh, if you're if you're not afraid of heights, all right. And I was uh -huh. afraid of heights, but I started mm -hmm. saying, "You're gonna be afraid of heights, or you're gonna eat. You're gonna take oh, a you're gonna take a zero or a half a loaf of bread. Uh huh. I'd rather take the half loaf of bread than not have nothing. And that's okay. how my work ethic is. I'm gonna work and I'm gonna strive, and that's you know that's just in, embedded in me to just be a, a hard worker in everything you do. Um, give you 100% in everything you do. Try to mm -hmm. try to um, open your own door. Try to make people um, see how, how you're valuable. Show your work, show your work ethic. When people see that, then they tend to hire you. You understand? That's why I try to tell people, show that you're eager to, 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 to gain money. You understand? And, um, of course. Hopefully, man, I have a couple of projects in mind, you know, that I want to do personally. Um, yeah. I did reach out to Snoop. I don't know, if he gets so many um, direct M's. So I told him, I said, Snoop, I would love to do a show with you and Dre, man. That's like my dream. Wow. <laughs> I would love to do a video with them, you know what I'm saying? Was that, recent, was that a recent message to Snoop? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like yesterday, I'm like, yo, let's do this, man. Yeah. You know, so. But again, you know, it's, I, I understand. The man is busy. Everybody's busy. And again, you know, I got to take into consideration how do people feel when they see me? Some people get scared. Some people get frightened. Some people get upset. Um, Setua, when I met her, she couldn't look at me too long. She starts crying. Uh, when I met uh, Layla Steinberg, to uh -huh. first manager, you know, and she was like shocked. She was like, wow, you know, and that's when I was going for the the same movie, but it was like a different um, director or something like that. So, so many different things going on, man. And I, I'm just blessed to be a part of it. I'm just so blessed to be a part. I'm blessed to even be on your show, bro. You know, oh, bro, and, hey, it's, it's, a, it's a pleasure having you on. First, my, my first guest of the show of the actual the whole show yeah so i, 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 I want to congratulate again. you bro i want to i want to you know congratulate you and tell you god bless you on your new show bro heart of an alcohol show for real thank you so much hey it's been a it's been a pleasure well don't don't be a stranger to the show you're always welcome on the show thank you andy thank you man and definitely keep us updated with these videos uh and, and keep I'll keep out for the, for the one that's dropping this friday yeah, the audio for Cam Shot. Yeah, you guys are gonna like it. Of course, of course. And Dub Rock. But no, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but no, honestly, thank you from the bottom of my heart for appearing on, on the on the Anytime, show. Anytime, brother. You know I'm here because you always support me. And I'm always willing to support you right back, bro. And so I want to give a shout out to your son, man. Tell him I said what's up. Look like hey, baby. Baby. And he's, he's watching, he's, I think he's watching right now, so thank you. God bless that. you, thank you, man, you know? And um, good luck with the school opening over there. Good luck, man. I'm praying everything's good, you know? Good luck with that. Thanks so much. Thanks so much. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed for the whole world. It's yeah. been a, it's been a, been a cra it's been a crazy year. Yeah, we all, gotta crazy stop, year. we all gotta stop and breathe. That's all, man. We're all human beings. Stop no matter me. what team, we're all human beings. So. Exactly. Exactly. Hey, thank thanks so much, Richard. Yo, and you take you take it. Anytime, Andy. God bless you, bro. God bless you too, bro. Take Yo, care. Guys, follow Heart of an Outlaw show, bro. Follow that yes. shit. West Coast, East Coast. Yes.